iOS 14.6 RC was released on Monday, and with it came the first look at the Beats Studio Buds. But not just that, Apple announced Dolby Atmos support spatial audio playback in Apple Music. And it also announced studio quality lossless audio support for Apple Music as well. Here's a look at what's new in 14.6. It's a little bit crazy because after the gargantuan release that was iOS 14.5, I just didn't imagine that Apple would release another, you know, fairly big update in iOS 14.6, which is launching, of course, just before iOS 15 is revealed at WWDC next month, in just a few weeks, that is. So iOS 14.6 is in its release candidate stage now, and that means it is basically what we will see when the official version drops in June. So you can see here, I'm running the latest version, iOS 14.6, the RC, and let's go ahead and take a look at the software version. You can see 14.6, let's go ahead and tap it. And there you get the build number. And if you're keeping score at home, it's 18F71. So let's move on to the meat and potatoes of this update. And of course it involves Apple Music. So Apple has basically announced two major new improvements to Apple Music. And that is of course, lossless audio and spatial audio with Dolby Atmos. So. This is kind of a big deal. Uh, not only do you get that lossless audio, but you get the awesome spatial audio support with Dolby Atmos. So of course, Apple pushed out a press release talking about these new improvements with Apple Music. One of the things you're gonna notice are a couple of new badges for Dolby Atmos and for lossless audio for albums that support those new features. So be on the lookout for those new badges later next month when lossless and Dolby Atmos support goes live officially with content that supports those features. So like I said, there are basically two parts to this story. You get lossless audio and that's going to support the 75 million songs available on Apple Music. They are going to be available in lossless format. And these are for Apple Music subscribers starting next month at no additional cost. Now, there are some things to keep in mind here, so we'll talk about those a little bit later. It's not completely cut and dry, especially if you're an AirPods customer. We'll talk about that here in a few. But in my opinion, the standout feature is going to be spatial audio with support for Dolby Atmos. That is going to be the one that is the most noticeable, I think, to the general public. Spatial audio is basically like a 3D surround sound. You have a sound stage that really surrounds you and it is extremely immersive. And more importantly, it works with all flavors of AirPods and even some Beats headphones, as long as they have the H1 or W1 chip, then you'll be good to go. And that's why I think this is gonna be the more popular of these two features, that being spatial audio. Now that's not to discredit lossless audio at all, but there's gonna be less of an audience that can take full advantage of everything that lossless audio brings to the table. Now Apple is using its ALAC or Apple Lossless Audio Kodak to preserve every single bit of information in the audio. So in other words, unlike lossy formats like AAC, you're not losing any of those precious bits of information, which is done to reduce file size, which has all sorts of benefits. Easier to download, works better with Bluetooth, bandwidth restrictions, etc. So Apple's lossless tier starts at CD quality, 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz. It goes up to 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. And these are playable natively on Apple devices. Now, Apple Music also will offer a high-resolution lossless file, all way up to 24 bit 192 kilohertz and that will require an external digital to analog converter or DAC. So I'm anxious to see how Apple actually markets its high quality lossless audio, especially the higher high bandwidth tier which requires that external hardware. But what's even more interesting is that lossless audio will actually not work with Apple's AirPods lineup because those devices connect via Bluetooth and there are inherent limitations bandwidth wise with Bluetooth. So indeed, this is sort of its own conundrum because that means that the AirPods, the AirPods Pro, and even the super expensive, just recently launched AirPods Max won't be fully compatible with lossless audio, at least 
at the moment that is. Of course, Apple Music audio files are encoded in AAC format, which are very small comparatively, which makes it ideal for bandwidth strapped Bluetooth connections. Now it's important to note that these problems aren't restricted to Apple Music or Apple headphones. It's basically a Bluetooth issue. Bluetooth headphones simply are not compatible with lossless audio in the way that Apple defines high quality lossless audio. Now, of course, Sony has created its own Bluetooth optimized lossless codec, and I guess Apple could go a similar route for future AirPods hardware. It'll be interesting to see how all this plays out. Now, it's one thing to look at the press release, but it's a whole nother thing to look at actual settings that you're gonna find within the music section of the settings app. So when you go to music here in 14.6 RC, you're gonna see some changes right off the bat, even if the lossless and Dolby Atmos stuff isn't quite there just yet. So you're gonna see under cellular streaming, you'll see updated labels for the high and low quality or high efficiency as Apple calls it here under cellular streaming. So if, if it's streaming over cellular data, you can choose between high quality AAC 256 kilobits per second or high efficiency HEAAC for low data usage. So that, that is one change that you'll see right off the bat, just those labels being affixed there within the cellular streaming section. And that cellular streaming is also located under audio now. And you'll notice a few other things have been moved around within the settings for music. Now, here's what I wanna look at right now, because this is actually not live just yet, but this is what you can expect to see once lossless audio and once Dolby Atmos spatial audio launches next month. So under the audio heading, you'll see a Dolby Atmos section. You'll see an audio quality section. You'll also see a download in Dolby Atmos section under downloads with the toggle switch there to toggle that on or off. So let's look at the audio quality first of all. So you see a lossless audio toggle. You're gonna to be able to turn lossless audio on or off. And while this will preserve every detail of your audio, unlike an AAC lossy encoded file, it will use a lot more bandwidth as Apple warns you. And that's why they give you these granular settings to set up lossless playback with cellular streaming, Wi-Fi streaming, and for downloads. You can go in there and pick and choose if you want lossless, even high quality lossless with cellular even. So that's kind of cool. But what Apple will do is they will warn you, <laughs> yes, they will warn you to let you know, hey, yeah, about that lossless streaming, you may wanna rethink that decision if you're using cellular data. They're gonna let you do it, but they're gonna warn you and it's opt-in only. So this is gonna take up a lot of bandwidth, I imagine. It'll be interesting to see the real figures at the end of the day for an album or a typical album that is. And of course, we definitely can't forget the Dolby Atmos section, which defaults to automatic. Now automatic will automatically play Dolby Atmos and other Dolby audio formats when connected to compatible devices like AirPods or specific Beats headphones with the H1 or W1 chip. So if you have AirPods, AirPods Pro, AirPods Max, or even the new Beats headphones that I'm about to show you, then automatic will play Dolby Atmos if available for the particular album you're listening to. Now, you guys know what the AirPods Pro look like by now. But now there's some Beats headphones, the Beats Studio Buds, which looks similar to the AirPods Pro as far as the wireless charging case is concerned, although it will be probably a little bit larger, but you get those truly wireless earbuds, no wires between them, and they are stem free as you can see there. So these things just fit right in your ears with the um, silicone ear tips, which are no doubt replaceable. So these will no doubt be compatible with Spatial Audio, Dolby Atmos, with Apple Music and iOS 14.6. And as you can see, the design of the wireless charging case with a little LED indicator below the Beats logo. And inside the case, you have what I presume to be the pairing button for manual pairing. And we'll have much more on these Beats Studio Buds in the very near future. So stay tuned to 9 to 5 Mac for that. But it looks like Beats is here for the long haul. So now let's talk about Apple Digital Master Branding. So you may have noticed this alongside the lossless and spatial audio badges within supported albums. So basically Apple Digital Master is not new. It's basically just a rebranding of Mastered for iTunes. In fact, if you go to the webpage, you can see the URL slug 
master for iTunes. So this is not new. Basically, Apple is just getting rid of the iTunes branding, which they've slowly been doing over the past few years and replaced it. Now, you also in 14.6 have updated descriptions for the tracking section in privacy. So you'll notice now that it tells you what this does when allow apps to request to track is disabled. Basically it will block all requests. And also if you notice that your tracking toggle is grayed out, it explains why that may be as well in detail. It could be because a profile is restricting the toggle, etc. So check that out if you're having problems enabling tracking in 14.6. And of course, Apple Card family support is still on the horizon. This is a feature that will allow multiple family members who are a part of iCloud family sharing to share the same Apple Card. Uh, and that will be launching when 14.6 goes live. And of course, podcast subscriptions will also be launching when 14.6 goes live. That of course is a new service that Apple's providing for podcast publishers to allow listeners to subscribe for premium content. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at iOS 14.6 release candidate. Thumbs up if you appreciated this overview. And of course, we'll be back with a full review of 14.6 once it goes live. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. What do you guys think about 14.6 and all the new Apple music features? Let me know down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with the 9 to 5 Mac.